let's not forget, of our union. And the vast, vast majority of the EU's checks now take place there. And if you ask me, that's a total outrage. So what does the former First Minister of Northern Ireland, Arlene Foster, want to see from the new Prime Minister to break the current political deadlock in her homeland? She joins me now. Arlene, first of all, I have to say a very happy birthday. Yes, thank you, Darren. I'm a birthday twin of the Duchess of Cornwall, although she's a little bit older than me. I hope you recognise that. (laughs) Uh, uh, Of course, it's a delight to be on with you today. And can I say uh, your discussion thus far has been severely lacking from the Conservative leaders debate, and that, of course, is the union. And uh, you were speaking there about the threat posed from the SNP. Uh, and of course, I will speak, as I always do, about the Northern Ireland and the fact that we have this internal border created by the protocol between Great Britain and Northern Ireland. And there is the, the real need to deal with that internal border and get it sorted out. But unfortunately, we haven't heard very much from any of the uh, Conservative candidates thus far. I think Liz Truss is the only one who has specifically referenced the Northern Ireland protocol so far. And I would really like to see not just the protocol has been mentioned more, but the United Kingdom and the union and the vision for the union going forward, I think that would be something that not only Conservative members would like to see, but certainly it's something that we would like to see here in Northern Ireland as well. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. But Arlene, just to give our viewers a refreshing update, a bit of a refresher there, could you explain where Boris Johnson actually has left the, the protocol? Where are we at with sorting it out? So the protocol, uh, of course, was one of Boris's big mistakes. I would say probably his biggest uh, mistake. Uh, Agreeing to an internal border in the United Kingdom was something uh, that he should never have done. But he wanted to get Brexit done, as he described it. And in order to do that for Great Britain, he allowed this border down the Irish Sea to materialise. He will say that he never believed that it would happen in this way, but it has. And ever since uh, it was put in place, um, the government, our government, have been trying to negotiate with the European Union to deal with the very fundamental problems that it has caused. Uh, The EU have said, no, no, uh, the protocol can't change. It's like the law of the Medes and Persians. It's unalterable, Uh, which, of course, is not true, because if you look at the text of the protocol, it envisages uh, amendments and replacements being added to the protocol uh, and, and therefore uh, it should be dealt with because it causes trade diversion, uh, it causes um, societal unrest here in Northern Ireland and of course because of the protocol we now don't have institutions, we don't have a, a storm of executive up and running and the relationship between Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland is probably at its lowest point it has been in uh, my memory. So we need to sort it out, uh, and Boris recognised that. First of all, there was the paper which came, the command paper which came forward when David Frost was in charge of Brexit negotiations. Uh, he brought that forward uh, to try and deal with the European Union in a proactive way. They, of course, came back with blank faces and said that they didn't have a mandate yeah. to negotiate. Uh, And now we have the protocol bill, which is currently in committee, um, which we hope will deal with some of the worst excesses of the protocol. So what I want to hear from these candidates is, are they going to continue with the protocol bill in its current form uh, so that we can deal with some of these difficulties? So what? 